Well, hello, Tim Arkell from the Darwin Institute Australia. Welcome to WW Doga, Tim. Thank you, Michael, very muchly. I enjoyed the Foreskin Revolution presentation. You guys are doing a great job, yep. And uh, it's, um, it's, it's good to see that um, we're, we're having an impact social media-wise. Um, it's, it's sometimes very difficult to get this message out. Um, and uh, it's good to see that uh, you're having great impact with TikTok. And we're very excited to introduce yourself and the Darwin Institute, which is also bringing success to Australia and New Zealand. And I was, I was thinking perhaps the best starting point, you're a family practice lawyer and a human rights lawyer, and it might be great for the audience to hear a little, little bit about you. Sure. Um, look, I... Um... I practice uh, primarily in, um, in family law here in Australia um, and um, in, uh, in respect of children's human rights as well, something very passionate and dear to my heart. Um, and um, look, it was, I guess the starting point was um, seeing the SBS, the feed, um, here in Australia, SBS is a multicultural um, free-to-air television network um, and uh, there is a program on there or, or I guess the feed's still on, is it, Michael? It is. Yeah, yeah. so, so they did a, um, they did a, um, a, a program uh, last year, sorry, the year before, which featured um, Max Roberts from um, Intact Australia. A lot of you will know Max. Um, and also um, yourself um, from Foreskin Revolution. And, um, and uh, it was a, a really good about a 20, 25 minute uh, little documentary um, on, um, on uh, foreskin positivity here in Australia. Um, and it wasn't long after that um, that I was uh, recommended to have a look at Brendan Marotta's uh, American Circumcision documentary. Um, and it was the uh, listening to the late Jonathan Conti actually, um, and the emotion in Jonathan's voice in that um, in that movie, and and um, the effects that it had had on him personally as a as a victim of of routine infant circumcision, and um, unfortunately Jonathan's no longer with us. But, um, these words had a profound impact upon me and it wasn't long after those watching those two things that I contacted Max and um, Max Roberts and uh, Max and I had a long conversation um, over the telephone and uh, he suggested that um, following um, a lot of you will know the late Paul Mason um, who was an Australian uh, barrister and family um, a human rights and family lawyer here at the uh, in Brisbane, actually practicing in Brisbane. Uh, I live in Queensland on uh, in on the east coast of Australia. And um, um, Paul, uh, when he finished his appointment as the children's commissioner to Tasmania, he he came back to Queensland and he formed the organisation. Um, that, that was the predecessor of the Darwin Institute called the Australasian Institute for Genital Autonomy. Um, and uh, Paul's been a, um, a worldwide um, leader and source of, of great information and, and was a great loss to the movement when Paul suddenly died. Um, and it was Max that suggested that uh, the Darwin Institute could uh, have the input of, a, of another lawyer with some passion and some understanding. And um, it wasn't long after that that I had a, a number of conversations. I, I had a chat with Damien Williams, who you all just met before. Damien's the, um, ma the uh, techno mastermind behind all those wonderful TikTok creations of yours, Michael. And um, lovely family guy from Sydney. And I had a chat with um, uh, James uh, Wright, who's uh, our, our um, treasurer. Um, and uh, you know, all good, all good-hearted family men, um, and um, just wanting to make a difference in the lives of children. And um, and I and think that that's how we all come together is that um, we we just want to see a, a difference in the lives of children. 
And that was AGA at that stage, the Australasian Institute of Gentle Autonomy. Uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed by the rebranding that has happened recently. And I'm really curious. So you've gone from AGA to the Darwin Institute. I think it's a really clever rebrand. And I'm curious as to the strategic thinking behind it. Um, yeah, look, I think, it, I think it was a process of, um, you know, Paul started AGA um, and on, on the first anniversary after the Cologne decision. And uh, that's, that's still a landmark case. Um, I, I've done a lot of research, being a, a lawyer, I've done a lot of research into, into, the, uh, into the, that, that case and the, the principles behind that case. And that's still good law today in Germany. It might have been overridden by the German parliament, but it's certainly still good law. You'll see there's a, a short slide I, I've created. So um, it, it was following um, our, the appointment of a new chair to the organisation, Jonathan Meddings. Um, and Michael, you know Jonathan well, and a number of you will know Jonathan Meddings from his involvement in the intactivist movement worldwide. Um, and Jonathan's a great, a great leader and, and a great chairman with some good ideas. And, and together with um, his knowledge of, of um, strategic planning and, and moving organisations forward, we all bring together, there's eight of us now on the board, and we all bring together a, a vast majority of skills. But, but the main idea behind um, rebranding was that the word genital, um, it evokes an emotional response in people. And that emotional response can either be a positive emotional response or a negative emotional response. And quite often it's the latter rather than the former. So it was, it was thought that if we took the word, of, of the, the, emotional, the emotional word out of the name, um, it, it, it would lend ourselves to the more professional advocacy work that we do. You guys, you guys are, a, are, are an artsy, um, out there, um, in your face kind of um, educational group, Foreskin Revolution, fantastic. Um, and I love it. And, and uh, you know, I, I have some stickers on my car that, that have emotive responses to them. But when you're advocating at um, higher political levels, when you're trying to engage with the uh, Human Rights Commissioner, the Children's Commissioner, when you're trying to advocate um, seriously in putting submissions together like we did with the Paediatric Surgery Review Task Force uh, in late 2018, um, you need to have... Um, we felt we needed a more professional name um, and uh, to, to take the emotive um, words out of the name. Um, so we did because that, it, 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 we felt it just sort of detracted from the, from the overall mission, um, which is to, to bring an end to genital cutting of all children, not just, not just males, but, but females are still subjected to genital cutting in Australia. Um, it, currently, there's, a, there's an action in, uh, happening in Western Australia, which I'm keeping my eye on. Um, and there was another case in New South Wales, which sort of didn't go very far. Um, it, look, we know that generally what happens is um, when travel was permitted in this country before the current uh, COVID crisis, parents just put their children overseas. So, um, so we know it happens, regardless of whether it's illegal in this country. So, um, so you know, we, we have a new strategic plan um, under the guidance of Jonathan, we, we decided to uh, rebrand to the name of the Darwin Institute, um, giving homage to the late Paul Mason and the late uh, Robert Darby, who was a very generous um, uh, benefactor. He left us a, um, a, a reasonable sum in his will to continue the work of uh, AGA. So we rebranded uh, to the Darwin Institute um, we felt that that uh, Darwin was a, was a better combination rather than the other one, which might have been the Maybe Institute. And uh, we didn't think the Maybe Institute was such a good um, 
was such a good ringtone to it. So we picked the Darwin Institute, and mm. um, and look, we've we've achieved quite a lot in the in the twelve months. Um, we've we've put together. You can go online and have a look at the Darwin Institute's new website um, and its functionality. You can have a look at the new strategic plan that we've put in place. We've appointed uh, four eminent. Um, uh, experts in their uh, respective fields to the um, expert advisory board to advise us on complicated um, advocacy matters. Um, and um, we've taken the organisation from um, an incorporated association, which, which may have been um, uh, liable to a hostile takeover from the pro cert lobby um, by being able to stack its voting um, and we've created a, a company limited by guarantee where only the uh, certain number of the board come up for renewal each year. So we've done our very best to protect the integrity of the organisation and its work going forward from a hostile takeover manoeuvre. So um, uh, currently we're um, seeking registration as a non-profit charitable organisation um, and um, Jonathan and I have been uh, instrumental in the last couple of months of, of working on a, a on a very um, complex and um, uh, strategic document regarding um, lobbying Medicare, which um, is still uh, funding, we know, still funding illegally uh, cosmetic circumcision procedures in Australia. Um, and it's time it was held to account because it's, uh, it's clearly a, a fraud against the Australian taxpayer. There's no two ways about it. It's, um, it's, it's not permitted by the legislation that created Medicare, um, yet they turned a blind eye to it and still fund the procedure. Some fantastic initiatives you've outlined there and uh, the, the rebranding as well. The, the logo looks fantastic. It's really exciting news. We're really looking forward to the Darwin Institute going forward and, and what what you guys will produce, um, especially uh, this position statement on Medicare and uh, trying to resolve the, the illicit funding, that the abuse of the Medicare system that is happening in Australia, um, illicitly funding circumcision, uh, yeah. non-medical circumcision. So um, a fantastic introduction, Tim. Thanks. Uh, thank you so much today uh, for, for explaining all of this about Darwin. Uh, any final comments? Uh, as we farewell the Doga. Oh, look, I'd just like to say thank you, Victor, for um, uh, and your team for putting this uh, wonderful uh, uh, day together. It's an enormous undertaking that you do. Um, and uh, as, as part of the worldwide advocacy um, organisations, the Darwin Institute, um, uh, I'd like to thank you for, for making the... Um, the, the the day possible that we uh, that we can learn what's happening around the rest of the world, um, and know that we are making a positive difference in the lives of children around the globe. The more we we create platforms for international discussion, we create platforms for international and intercultural understanding. And I think this is one of the most important things yeah. to break a taboo with a positive impulse that we learn from each other and that we don't let us uh, being separated by others who speak of our behalves, but it's not theirs, it's ours. It's, it's the children's behalf and I think it's nothing more worth uh, we could do worldwide to stand together for those who cannot speak for themselves. Thank you very much well put. To, to Australia well put, and see you soon again. Thank bye you bye. All. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.